In this video, I'm going to show you how to build and play five new Minecraft minigames that I've invented. Let's begin. I invented another Minecraft minigame. This one I call Color Splat. In the center, there's a big pole with a ladder running up it, where up to four players will race and fight their way up to the top, inevitably punching and knocking each other down. But once there, they'll need to jump off and land safely in the water below. Once they land, they'll need to place a piece of water of their exact color on the spot they land on, reducing the safe landing space for everyone else with each successive jump. The twist comes in that if you land next to the colour of the enemy, any adjacent pieces of wall also will become your colour, so this rewards riskier jumps. This continues until all the water is gone, where you'll count up who has the most wall, and whoever has the most, has won! First, you want to dig a too deep 7x7 hole in the ground. I then like to fill it in with a layer of black concrete topped with black glass, which gives a nice visual flair to the water on top and makes it look a bit scary. I then build a border of cherry wood and add access staircases either side. Now you can fill in the pool with water, which players use the land in. I also like to add some fences, which I just think looks nice. Now we can start the construction of the tower. Now remember to add some beds as players will be dying a lot in this minigame. Also add four barrels next to the beds, which will contain the wall the players use in the minigame. That being red, green, yellow and blue. Now we can extend the pole and ladder upwards. I found that 26 blocks is a good height, but you can extend it as much as you want. Now technically the minigame is done, but for a bit of extra visuals, you can dig a perimeter around and add a nice floor. I've opted for andesite, polished andesite, stone and cobblestone, outlined with spruce wood. Finish up with some bushes and boom, colour splat is done. This is an incredibly simple minigame to build and requires absolutely no redstone. However, do know that for the colour of the wall, I prefer to use cyan wall for the blue player, as without shaders, blue wall can blend in with water a bit too much. I invented another Minecraft minigame, this one I call Run. The game takes place in this large glass tunnel, with a strip of redstone lamps running down one side. Each player takes turns running from one end of the tunnel to the other, and has to beat the timer, represented by the lights chasing them. After completing a run, the player can add or delete up to 10 blocks, to make the course harder for the next player. Over time, this will naturally generate a mini parkour course, which will test the skill of the player if they can beat it in time. If you fail a course three times, you're out. And to stop people making it impossible, you can challenge them to try and beat their own course. If they prove you wrong, you're out, else they get eliminated. This continues till one player remains victorious. To build Run, first you want to build the glass tunnel. You can extend this as long as you wish, but I found that making it 26 blocks long, 7 blocks wide, and 9 blocks tall works out pretty good. Of course, you also want to add the strip of lamps down the side, with one separated at the end, being the final light. And for the start line, I made a pattern of iron and black stone pressure plates to resemble a real start line. Now for the redstone. First, build redstone like this underneath the pressure plates. This combines them so they all activate as one big pressure plate. This then leads into a piston with repeaters coming out the side. This shortens the signal to only be one redstone tick in length. What follows is a large strip of repeaters all set to maximum delay. Above are a bunch of observers looking at the repeaters, which then take the signal as it passes and powers the lamps above them. This is how we create the effect of the lights chasing the player whenever they're doing a run. At the end of the tunnel, we then shorten the signal once again through this piston. This creates a T flip-flop for this piston with a redstone block, which basically acts as a big light switch. This signal is then passed up to the final light, which determines if the player has made it or not. The final piece of redstone is just linking the pressure plates up at the start to the second signal shortener on the other side. This acts as a reset switch, so the final light turns off whenever a new run begins. Once all the redstone is done, you can finish decorating and make it look all swanky. I've even added sound effects and a small music piece to play whenever someone starts a run. Done via no blocks. And finally, I would recommend having some chests and crafting tables nearby to hold all the blocks the players can use during the game. Run is one of my favourite mini games, and while it does contain some redstone, it's really simple and easy to set up. And the best part of Run is it's different every single time you play it. Yes, I made another Minecraft minigame. This time it's Battleship, inspired by the classic board game by Hasbro. 
It takes place on this board, split into two sides, and the gold platform is where you place note blocks, which represent your ships. Each player is given five and can place in any arrangement they like. The players then take turns guessing where the enemy ships are by opening fence gates on this grid, which sends a signal to the other side via observers. You then listen out for a bong sound. If you hear it, you've scored a hit, else it's a miss. You keep track of this by placing red and yellow carpet on your side. Players repeat this until one side has sunk all the enemy ships, and they have won. Battleship may look very complicated when first looking at it, but believe me, this might be the easiest to explain minigame in the entire video, even more than colour splat. Let's break it down, literally. If we remove the play area, you can see it's nothing but observers and iron trap doors. In fact, it's also symmetrical, so we can actually remove one side from the equation. Now you might notice it's actually the same circuit repeated four times next to each other. If we then isolate one of these circuits, we can see how simple Battleship really is. It's simply four lines of observer chains connecting one side to the other. If you build this and repeat it four times for both sides, you're already like 90% done. All that's left to build is the play platforms like so. Just make sure to put the fence gates on these observer faces and place the gold blocks on these observer butts. Add some barrels to hold the note blocks and carpet when not in use and boom, you're done. Really, it's that simple. I invented yet another Minecraft minigame. This one I call Hot Headed. Players enter the game by going underground and are given three golden carrots each. The players stand on this large grid adorned with redstone lamps on the walls, where every five seconds, random lamps will turn on and off. This will give a warning to players to move out of the way, because shortly after, the corresponding rows and columns will shoot up with pistons. This could be one row, two rows, or even more, so stay on your toes. And if you were unlucky enough to get caught, you'll be shot up and have your head burnt by the fire above. The game continues this loop of dodging, weaving, and getting your head fried until only one player remains, and they have become victorious. Oh, yeah. Okay, Hot Headed is the most complex redstone of the video, and I'll do my best to simplify it and keep it concise. I've stripped away everything not essential to make this game work for the purposes of explanation. First, we're going to build the central piston chamber. Starting at the bottom, this is an 8x8 square. We add a layer of note blocks and repeaters like this. Next layer, we have more note blocks and observers facing upwards, as well as observer lines cutting across. Okay, third layer, this is important. We place rail consisting of powered rails and activator rails in a checkerboard pattern. I've highlighted it here for help. Okay, fourth layer, we have yet more observers in lines facing upwards with slabs in between. Fifth layer is even more rail again in a checkerboard pattern. Once again, I've highlighted them, feel free to pause. Sixth layer is easy peasy, just cover the whole thing in observers facing upwards. And the final layer is just pure sticky pistons. Now you want to add the floor to your game. I've chosen sandstone and red sandstone for mine, as well as you want to add the walls and the redstone lamps like so. Okay, back to the redstone. Connected to the central chamber, you want eight sets of four repeaters, connected to these endpoints and delays set to these values. Stemming from each one of these lines, you want redstone space like this, with the dropper facing upwards to a hopper at the end of each one. These hoppers are then connected via repeaters. Each side should currently look like this and this. Okay, almost there. On each wall with redstone lamps, you want to place redstone like this. These activate the lamps. We then connect these lines below using transparent blocks. I've chosen glass with redstone on top. Okay, last step. The two activation lines for the droppers we added earlier now need to be linked together and connected to an etho clock. The etho clock will then be controlled by these redstone torches so that I can place a lever here and this will now turn the whole game on or off. The last thing you have to do is place about 10 blocks of dirt inside the hoppers of the etho clock and you need to place these items inside of each one of the droppers. Hopefully, if you've built everything correct, this should all be working. All you have to do now is decorate it however you like. And boom, Hot Headed is now working. Hopefully, enjoy. I invented another Minecraft minigame. This time it's golf. Okay, maybe not invented. The Scottish beat me to that. Not the first time in Minecraft either. 33 million views. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you now that this version of golf sucks. Sorry, Lombie. They say throw items as your way to shoot. That blows. You can't control how far you shoot, and it gets confusing with multiple people. I've got a better idea. Place down some blue eyes for your course and top it with green carpet for that classic golf look. You can even add obstacles like sand pits or even redstone contraptions like this. Now for a ball, place an armor stand instead. And we can use swords with different levels of knockback to control our shots. This adds a lot more skill. And when close to the hole, we can use a fishing rod as a putter for fine control. 
and you can use different color hats for multiple players. Here's an example of a course I made earlier, and not to brag, but I demolished my friend. I am the golf queen. And if you prefer working with schematics, you can find the files to all these mini games and many more in my Discord. So check the pinned comment down below.